Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Codros Wealth Lounge. My name is Kofo Rola. I'm the team lead private wealth management here at Codros. And I have here with me today, my colleague Doin Sola, who is the head of private wealth team at Codros. Today, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic, which is the citizenship by investments program and its benefits in today's world. We have here today with us a distinguished guest, who is Mr. Oluwa Femi Faweya. He is the Executive Vice President, Partnerships and Alliances at SESI Partners. And he'll be talking to us today on different aspects of citizenship by investments. And we'll get to learn so many um, knowledge from him. So over to you, Mr. Faweya. Tell us more about SESI Partners. Thank you very much, Kofo, and thank you, Doi. Um, SESI Partners <laughs> is Africa's leading citizenship by investment firm. Um, we have presence in Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt. Ghana, Canada, South Africa, um, Vanuatu, oh, wow. Montenegro. Yeah, um, Femi Badejo, who is the managing partner and the founder. Yeah, three partners. Um, Femi Badejo, the managing partner. Then Tayo, um, Olabajo, the executive vice president of Africa. Then Femi Fawen. That's the executive vice president partnership and alliances. Um, we've been in, the, in existence for more than four years. Um, we've also helped several families to facilitate second citizenship across Africa. And um, it's an interesting journey to be in the citizenship by investment industries. It comes with its ups and downs, but um, it's a lovely industry, I must say. That's quite interesting. So tell us, how many countries um, do you focus on? What are your core countries that you focus on in your firm? Thank you very much once again. Um, five Caribbean countries. Okay. Um, St. Kitts and Davis, okay. St. Lucia, Antigua, Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, then um, the Pacific, um, Vanuatu. For residency programs, those are the European programs. Malta, um, Cyprus, Greece. Um, we also have a Republic of Ireland, um, the UK program, the USEB5. Then um, we have the Saudi Arabia program, Netherlands, Bulgaria, a whole lot of programs. Mm. That's a wide range of countries. Yeah, yeah, it is. Mm. It is. Okay. So can you tell us um, some of the benefits of securing a second citizenship in today's world? We, If we start listing all the benefits, <laughs> we can't unpack everything today. Because, okay, uh, so it tell us some. It comes with a whole lot of mm. benefits. Um, global mobility is one of them that mm. is having... Visa free access to over 100 countries. Okay. Um, tax breaks is one of them that um, helps you manage your tax um, taxes. Okay. Um, there are another one is you could add your family members. Okay. So we have some families where maybe they only had two of their children abroad, but father and mother are born in Nigeria here. So mm. it's an opportunity for you to be a global citizen. Mm. Um, for some of those countries, you could include, for all, almost all of them, you could include your parents. But the ages differ. Some say parents from ages 55, some say 65. Then um, for some countries allow you to add your siblings. Um, if they are married and dependent on you, some countries allow that. So for children, for both citizenship and residency programs, it varies. Some countries would say 18 years. Some countries would say children up to 25 years, children up to 25 years. I think the max is children up to 30 years. Okay. Yeah. So the price, the prices for this citizenship, does it vary per like the number of family members you're adding or how does it work? Oh yes, it varies. So, uh, it ranges from a single applicant to, um, couples to a family of three, a family of four, a family of five for, for each country's citizenship by investment, the prices vary. Um, some are more expensive than the others. Some are cheap. Um, for the residency programs too, some are more expensive than the other. But um, if you look at them, I think it all depends on what you want. Do you want residency or citizenship? That's what determines um, the, the it determines the price point. The number of people on the application also determines the price point. Um, the age of the children and the age of the people involved also determines the price point. Okay, so can you shed more light on the residency program? Because I heard you mention that previously. So the residency program, um, more prevalent in the um, European countries, um, they start with, they call the golden visa, which is like a temporary resident permit. Um, you get, when you acquire that, 
um, it gives you the access to reside in Europe. For um, some, it varies. So we have two types of residences. There's the temporary residency, there's the permanent residency. But um, the temporary residency graduates into the permanent residency. Then for the permanent residency, you need to meet some requirements before you convert it into citizenship, meaning you might need to live in the country for a while. That's the requirement. You might also need to learn the language of the country, like Port Portugal, for example. You need to learn the Portuguese language as part of um, requirements to become a citizen. Then um, there's also state requirements. You need to live there for a certain period of time. Same thing with the UK too. Um, you need to do 185 days yearly in the UK. That's six months. You, you can stagger it, but it must cumulatively be 185 days in a year. Um, some other countries too want you to come into the country to do your biometrics. Um, if you're buying a property, they want you to come and inspect the property and choose your property. So there are loads of, um, how do I say? There are loads of requirements for different countries. Yes, yeah, so some countries will tell you, um, like Malta citizenship, they have um, some you can become a citizen in 12 months, some you can become a citizen in 36 months. So it all depends on what you want. So what are the factors that um, determine the length of the citizenship period? the length of the citizenship period. So it's four. Do you mean the application period? You mentioned 18 months okay. and 24 months. Oh, okay. So what so, it, so, so it depends on your funds actually, because for the Maltese program, um, the 12 months is more expensive than and the, 36 the one months. for the 36 months. Oh. It's more expensive. Is it because yeah. it's fast tracked? Yes, it's fast tracked actually. Okay. So that's it's for more expensive. That's for Malta. That's for Malta, yes. Okay. It's more expensive mm. than that of the 36 months. Okay. So would you consider second citizenship as a wealth management strategy? It is actually. Looking looking at the lots of benefits that we have in this in this universe. Um now, what are the things you're looking for? Where where what are the things you're looking for when you want to manage your wealth? I'm looking at an economy where the banking system can do what I want it to do for my wealth. That's one. I'm looking for an economy that is politically stable. I'm looking for an economy with economic stability and financial stability. I'm looking for business opportunities. Um, if I move my money away from country A to jurisdiction B, what benefit does it do to my wealth? Is it giving me high returns? Is it giving me low taxes? Because I need to look at how do I manage my taxes? Is it giving me low income tax? Is it giving me low capital gains tax? Is it also giving me zero worldwide income tax and other tax incentives? Another thing I need to look for, returns on my investment. Which one gives me the highest returns? Am I investing in stocks? Am I investing in shares? Which one will I make the best returns? If I'm investing in real estate, I need to look at if I what, 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 what's the cost of buying the cheapest property? Well, what, if I'm buying properties now, I'm looking at what's the cost of the cheapest properties there? What can I make from this property? Another thing I'm looking at is um, I'm looking at the ease of doing business in that country. How fast can I be able to register my business? How fast can I be able to, you know, open my bank account and get my business running? If I need to move my money to another jurisdiction, how easy it is for me. Mm. So if you see with a second citizenship, with a global mobility that you have, you have the world on your palms. Your palms. It's a walk like to. It's easier. Yes, it's a mm. walk to. So I'm able to travel around the world. I'm okay. able to study economies and I'm able to see that, okay, I think if I put my wealth in this economy, mm -hmm. I may not triple it or double it. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, my wealth is safe. I'm, and I'm diversifying. I'm also looking at it. This gives me high return. This gives me low tax, low taxes. So like I said, there's a whole lot of benefits that comes with it. I'm also looking at the future of my children. Um, almost every parent wants their children to manage their wealth. So I'm looking at it. Where do I take these children to? Where they would be able to learn and have the right tools to be able to manage my investment. 
another thing I'm looking at is health is wealth. Where do I get the best health care? So I look at those countries, I pick my passport and I get the best health care there. So- can, I, can I chip in here? So something came to my mind when you were talking, right? Um, for these passports, like these different countries, like what is the least number of countries that a passport can get you in? Like visa free or if someone does this in my investment, do you still need to apply for visas or what's it like? So, so from the countries that we um, pro, pro, process their programs, um, we're looking at over 100 countries. Visa free? Visa free, yes. Um, some 143, um, 152. Um, when you become any of the European citizen, um, you are having access to more than 160 countries. 172, yes, you visa free. So, 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 like I said, it's a whole lot to unpack, honestly. That's quite impressive. Thank you. So you mentioned something about the American um, USA EB something. Can EB you shed more, yeah, can you shed more light on that? So EB5 is the American um, green card, how you get a green card, but you must invest in America. Um, you must invest in the regional center in America. Um, that regional center must be able to employ people, Americans, to work there. Um, it's a five-year stretch. Um, the stay requirement, you need to go to America to stay there one, I think 185 days in a year. You need to be in America. Um, Sorry, the 185 shouldn't be a stretch. You can you stagger can it. You can do it at a stretch. Okay. All so right. I can do, let's say, two months, then February, I come back to, let's say I'm from Uzbekistan. I'm just saying, I go back to Uzbekistan. I do another one month, you know, so I can stagger it over the period of one year. But it must be 185 days. Okay. So um, what's the cost, like the cost implication? Hmm. Um, it starts from $100,000 and above. For which one now? For the American one? For, or? For, for, okay. So for the Caribbean countries, okay. it starts from $100,000 excluding associated fees. What do I mean? Okay. Um, if, it's the, if you're going the donation route, the donation route starts from $100,000. After that, you need to pay some fees. So like what does the donation fees. route, what does, it, what does that mean? So there are two major options when we're talking about the Caribbean countries. Okay. There's the donation option mm -hmm. and there's the um, real estate investment option. Okay. So the donation option means I am donating money to the government of that country. Mm. And what I'm like getting charity. back. charity. Yes. Okay. And what I'm getting back is the citizenship of that country and all the benefits that comes so with it. So it means the amount donated is not coming back to you. Oh, it's not. Oh, okay. Oh, it's okay. not. So it's if not. you're buying a property. So you're giving to a charitable cause in that country. You're donating to the government of that country. That is it a cheaper option or more it expensive? Is. It okay. is cheaper than the real estate investment option. Okay. Because the government of those countries, so for the real estate investment option, the government of those countries partnered with some real estate companies to build hotels, condos. In those um, countries? In those countries. Okay. Resort. So your investment is a timeshare for some. Some you're buying the property outrightly. Some, it's a timeshare. So you have a share in those hotels and resorts. And um, what you now get is um, you get accelerated citizenship between previously, it was within three to four months. But based on the realities of what we're seeing now, it's getting between six to nine months. Why? For Why you to that? get the citizenship. Um, because they've increased... Um, their due diligence days. Oh, okay. So they're they are taking time to do more due diligence on each applicant okay. now, mm. yes. Um, previously, the due diligence was, um, I think, three to four months, but okay. now they're taking their time, mm. peeling it layer by layer before <laughs> we bring you into the country. Let's know who you are. Let's know who you are. True. Um, so because um, they need to also cross their T's and dot their I's before they, be, they, before they approve your citizenship. Sure. So those are some of the things that they've been doing. So seven to nine months, you could get that. Now for the real estate investment option, the investment is higher than that of the donation because after like five years, there's a portion of your investment that comes to you. Right. You mentioned something about getting returns in five years. Yeah. Is it safe to say that if I take up this process now, in the next five years, I won't be getting any flow of funds? So um, depends on the, there are different projects in the Caribbean. So depend on the projects you are investing in. There are some projects that will tell you, um, okay, let's look at building a resort. We start selling 
the second citizenship from the get-go. Um, some projects won't be able to give you returns until the resort starts. But um, they are so, so the, the interest rate varies. Some will tell you we'll give you 2% per annum on your investment. Some would say we'll give you 1% per annum. But one thing is sure, at the end of five to seven years, you would get a bulk return on your investment. Um, for Grenada, $220,000. For St. Kitts and Nevis, $200,000. Um, I know there's been a review. As if, is that as a family package or as an individual? Based Whether an individual or a family package. So let's say if I invest in... Once it's Grenada. the real estate investment option. Okay, because I, you know, you mentioned earlier that if it's an individual, it's about 100 and something. That's the donation option. If it's the donation option, it starts from 100, excluding the associated fees. Now, by the time they add the fees, Everything you've paid for donation, you're not getting anything back. But for the real estate investment option, you are getting a part of the investment back after five to seven years. So it's not something at the end, like every year? Is it yearly? That's what I'm saying. Like for what the end every year? <laughs> Some, no. Okay, let me explain. Let me let me explain it again. So the real estate investment option, let's, let me just cite an example. Let's say Grenada for a family of um, four, I'm just saying, is $350,000. Now, after five to seven years, out of that $350,000, I would get $220,000 back. After five to seven years? Yes, I would get $220,000 back out of three fifty. dollars Now, apart from that, based on the project I'm investing into, it comes with a yearly return. Some of those projects, some may say you get 2% per annum. Is it at the point of, you know, applying that you would yes, care about this you, you would know about it okay. from, from the point, from the get-go. So they will tell you, for this, you get 2%. Some would say, okay, you get 2.5 per annum. Some would say you get 1%. It still depends on the project. So that 2% comes back to you? Definitely, yearly. Okay. So it's safe to say that in addition to the second citizenship, you're getting extra value for definitely the funds. Definitely. Hmm. Interesting. So can you tell us about um can you share like success stories um highlighting um what the second the positive impact that having a second citizenship has done for some of your clients? Like can you just share some stories with us? Real life stories? I'm sure you have some, so just, you know, tell us some. I'll just share one. Okay. Um, there's a client um, who is big on real estate. And um, I remember the first day I met the client, I was like, um, can I, I went to discuss second citizenship with him. He was like, Femi, um, I have most of my investment in Nigeria here. So I said, I started asking him, do you think of going investing outside the country? He said, um, I don't think so. So we started talking and um, we were discussing about the exchange rate. So I was telling him that um, one side effect, I love the real estate, but one side effect is every time we have an increase in Forex in Nigeria, the exchange rate goes up. Let's say like what we had this year, that went from 400 and something to like 900 last year, sorry, from like 400 to like 900. The value of your property, no matter the returns you make, because you're making your returns in local currency in Nigeria, in Naira. If you compare it, if you make 100 million, let's say you make 100 million, 100 million gain on your property in 2023, based on the increase, in dollars, it has shrink to what you've made. Okay. Now, if I have the same property outside the country, the value still remains the same. Okay. It's the same. If I put it on rent, I am making rental income. At the end of five years or at the end of two years, there's property gain for me. It will appreciate in value. Then, I'm making rental income. I'm better off than where I started from. So I've seen some of our clients and they're like, I think I like this option. I need to start buying properties abroad. So that so real-time benefits over a period of time. So that my property, let's say I buy a property at 
sixty thousand dollars. I'm just saying, for example, and um, I put it on rent. I'm making some monies monthly. At the end of a year, the property appreciates in value. I'm gaining three things. It's still denominated in foreign currency. My property is appreciating in value. I'm also making rental income. I've seen clients do this. So they've been able to edge their funds against FX. Making FX income. Having a property abroad, which is in their name. And also safeguarding their funds. All right. So what are the potential challenges or consideration that individuals need to put in place? Hmm. Potential challenges that individuals need to put in place before applying, 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 or applying for like give me factors to consider. Good. So some of the things you need to look at is one. Hmm. Do I have an international passport? <laughs> Quite obviously. Very valid. <laughs> Am I above 18 years? Um, do I have any criminal record? This is the bedrock of second citizenship. Um, last year alone, we didn't take some applications because um, it is, um, how do I say it? It is bad wasting a client's time and wasting your own time. It is bad wasting a client's money and wasting your own resources, it won't be approved. So let's not start the journey. So the first thing we do is um, we run a background check on a client. So when we're discussing and you said you want to start, kindly send us your international passport bio data pages for everybody above 16 years. 16, the age of 16, yes. So it goes through due diligence. It goes through the database of the security companies. And um, if it's unfavorable, we'll tell you. The due diligence, the background check is unfavorable. We won't be able to onboard you. So you don't need to waste your time. You don't need to pay us. If it's favorable, we move to the next stage, which we need to ask you. Um, your travel history, do you have any visa rejection? Most especially UK, yes, a denial. Most especially wow. because these countries are, when you get their passport, they're mm -hmm. visa free to some of these countries. Oh, oh okay. yes. Okay, oh, yes. True. So you need to mm -hmm. confirm. If you've not applied for a UK visa before, fantastic. Okay. If you've applied and you're given, fantastic. Mm -hmm. If you were declined. If you were rejected. Rejected. Okay. Please reapply. Before you consider the second oh, citizenship, yes. okay. Please reapply. Okay. What yes. if they get rejected again? You have to reapply to you. Are you get serious? It if you wow. really want it, because hmm. there's um another thing is if you omit some information while filling the form, hmm. as in knowingly, intentionally omit some information, hmm. and they find out, then they will always find out because their due diligence is strong. So you will get your application denied. So those are some of the things like we ask the question, we ask these questions. We It's like we're drilling the client and some of them are not happy when you're asking them this question, but we try to make them understand, sir, it is for your own the good. The consequences. Ma, it is for your own good because mm. this is the foundation. I need to get it right. If we don't get it right, you won't get approved. Right. So are there specific regions or countries where demand for second citizenship is growing? And Definitely. what trends Definitely. do you see in the industry? Definitely. Um, Asian countries. Mostly. Did you yes. say Asian? Asians. Are you Asians, oh, yes. Wow. Mostly. Um, yes, mostly. Mm. They, they, they apply for second citizenship more than everybody. Africa is picking up. Mm. Africa is what picking up. I think Africa will be in the front burner no, right no, now. No, no, no. <laughs> For second citizenship, Asians. Oh, Asians, yes. So followed by Africans. F Africa, the last eight years, there's been a trajectory. It's been going okay. up. It's been going up. We'll get there. It's been going up. But um, African countries are not so slacking up because they are working on their passports. 
oh, they are working on their passport. So some of them too, they've seen the benefits and they are working on their passport and let's make our passport good for our citizens. Okay, so for the Africans and Asian countries, which countries are they applying to? So mostly, um, it depends on what you want. Mm. Um, we've seen more people tilt towards the Caribbean countries. Is there a reason why? What do you You're think? You're getting citizenship outright. Oh, okay. So you so would, it's not you would a take citizenship. Some, 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 before most, citizenship. Most people prefer citizenship to residency, to residency yeah, because okay. um, mm -hmm. they have two different legal, legal status. True. Um, citizenship gives you more legal status than mm -hmm. residency. Mm -hmm. Sorry, excuse me. In some countries with your, I think America, if I'm right, with your green card, I don't think you're allowed to vote. No, I don't think yes. so either. So there are different benefits that comes, comes with citizenship citizen. and residency. Residence. Yeah. Mm. So sorry, quick one, right? When you were talking about the rejection part. So let's say, for instance, a family of five applies and let's say one of them has like issues. Would they outrightly decline the what whole kind of family? Issues, please? Well, <laughs> so let's say like when they carry out their due diligence, for yes. instance, and then they see that, okay, maybe one of them has something, there's something going on with the person's application. Would they outrightly, you know, reject for the whole yeah, family so, or would they just, so, 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 so this, is, this is life. Okay. Um, that is why we always want you to disclose. Mm. We, we, we ask you, um, what are the things you should tell us? Okay. What are the things that. If they find out, they would know. Mm -hmm. Let's report ourselves. First of all. Yeah. Okay. Um, people make mistakes. Okay. Disclosure is very important. Very, very important. Very important. People True. make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen people make mistakes maybe when they were in secondary school, mm. um, shoplifting and all. And mm. um, um, did they get pardoned mm. after a while? Um, how was it? Did they serve their sentence? So when they ask you, do you have any criminal record? You say no. You have to say yes. And oh, you have to say reasons. yes and explain. Okay. You know, you, mm. you explain, okay. oh, this was what happened. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, I did I did the term mm -hmm. and the, the, this is the mm -hmm. result. This is mm -hmm. the feedback and everything. Um, I've lived after then, I've changed, mm. you know. And um, they will want to know, okay, maybe after then you've gotten married, mm. you've started your own business, you're doing good. They do a due diligence on your business mm. and they see you're doing good. Mm -hmm. It's their decision. Mm. But you disclosed it. Mm. If you don't disclose it, makes that's it the worse. problem. Makes it worse. Yes, that's mm. the problem. Makes it worse. Okay, quite interesting. Um, <laughs> it's really been an insightful session sitting here with you today, you. learning more about citizenship by investment. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, and we call it a wrap at this point. Um, see you next time. This is the Codros Lounge. Bye.